There are a lot of things from the 1970s that we all love. However, not everything from the decade was great. We may not have thought much about it at the time, but looking back, they certainly did not age well. In this video, we will have a look back at some of the 1970s trends that we never want back. As we look back at some of the styles we had, we can certainly wonder what we were thinking and hairstyles were no exception. Farrah Fawcett proved that feathered hair could look absolutely gorgeous, but that was not the case for everyone. Many of us tried it, but we just did not have the same effect. Not even rock stars of the time period could pull it off. For some reason, a lot of people thought that leisure suits were great. They were supposed to be the perfect fashion piece that could be used for work or leisure. These became increasingly popular for both men and women during the disco era. However, as we look back on these suits, they certainly didn't age too well. Do you remember having a vest? It seemed like just about everyone had one at some point during the 1970s. If they are the right style, then you can look all right, but the decade saw some that were probably a bit too wild. On second thought, perhaps we should just leave those to the lawmen of the Old West. Denim has remained a popular fashion item for decades, but the 70s pretty well went on denim overload. Double denim never really seemed like the best style to go with. However, every so often there seems to be an attempt to bring it back. Just remember there is always something else that can go with your denim. Studded belts came on strong in the punk scene during the 1970s. The idea behind them was to show that you didn't have to conform to the norm. These belts had a serious comeback in the early 2000s. They were all over in places like Hot Topic, but right now they aren't so edgy. Stripes are a fashion that will never go out of style. However, just like the denim, the 70s took it to an extreme level. For some reason, many people thought it would be great to look like wallpaper. There was so much of it that it could actually give you a headache. Plaid was another item that went too far. I myself love plaid, but in the 1970s, people went plaid crazy. They could have a plaid shirt underneath a plaid jacket with plaid pants and a plaid hat. At that point, even lumberjacks would cringe. Nothing says creepy like a man in a knitted sweater with a belt that would go around it. What was that even for anyways? It all seemed like something that a serial killer would wear as he drove around in his solid panel van. Hopefully this style never makes a comeback. Platform shoes are the most impractical shoe that refuses to die. People love them until they wear them and discover how uncomfortable they are. They can also make you more prone to accidents as well. This style is really just better locked away in grandma's chest up in the attic. A little flare in the leg is not necessarily a bad thing, but the 1970s took this one to the extreme. Back then, these legs flared so much that you could actually hide your kids in them. In recent years, these made a little bit of a comeback, but they didn't seem to stay too long. Perhaps people realized that these required a little more care than they thought. Flare legs weren't the only thing that got bigger in the 70s. Remember the collars? They got wider and longer almost to the point of being funny. Some look like seagull wings or bat wings, while others got absolutely ridiculous and look like a big old floppy pair of bunny ears. Hopefully these collars never fly back into style. In order to balance out those super big collars, you needed a super wide tie. A lot of these ties had crazy patterns on them, which could really make it look gaudy and unsightly. Hair in the 70s was something to be desired on men. It was perfectly fine to have bushy sideburns and or a mustache that looked like a walrus. Back then, it was also highly acceptable and desired for men to show off their chest hair. That particular trend hasn't been around for a long time. The sexual revolution changed a lot of things and people began experimenting with things away from home. This is when the shaggin' wagons came into existence. 
They were like an old musty motel on wheels that was lined with shag carpet and other tacky decorations. People put a lot of money into these, but eventually they began to be frowned upon. The 70s was also a time when many couples felt the need to have matching outfits. It really didn't matter if you were into disco, urban cowboy, or anything in between. It was really just sort of an odd way to mark your territory. Beer and soda cans used to have pull-off tabs that could be completely removed. While these were around in the 70s, people started getting crafty with them. It was very popular to make a set of curtains with them, but it went too far when they began making clothing with them. It's almost like they were preparing for a shark attack. Looking back on it now, maybe it was the perfect outfit to go watch Jaws in the theater. When disco first came around, it was very popular in Latino and black clubs. Eventually, it evolved into a craze that was in every type of club, and at that point, it went too far. Especially when you heard things like Disco Duck. This was a whole album where someone was singing like a duck. After that, it's no wonder that this genre died out. With everything getting bigger in the 70s, like flared legs and butterfly collars, it makes you wonder why some things were so small. Hot pants or short shorts were almost like briefs. There is nothing wrong with showing a little leg, but sometimes parts come out that you couldn't unsee. It was really an uncomfortable style for those wearing it as well as everyone else around them. Jeans and pants were another item that left little to the imagination. There was definitely no guessing on whether or not it was a male or female. They were so tight that you could actually count the change in the pockets. Waterbeds became huge in the 1970s. If you couldn't visit the ocean, then why not bring the motion to your bedroom? This was also a way of separating yourself from previous generations. No one had ever had anything like it. They really weren't all that bad until you accidentally sat on the waterbed with something in your pocket which would puncture it and send water gushing throughout your home. If you have one of these today, then you might not like it. It's not the easiest thing to climb up out of, and your back might not like it either. Flashy vinyl jumpsuits also became a thing during the disco era. Everyone pretty much looked like they were wearing candy wrappers, and they really weren't all that breathable either, which meant that the smell could kill you. Rooms and homes were very earthy feeling, but at the same time, they were monochromatic. Each room had a different color that went all the way around the room. Shag carpet was a staple in most homes, and it required special care with raking and a vacuum to handle it. Bedspreads, wallpaper, and furniture were gaudy and unique to the decade. In the 1970s, many people had carpet in the bathrooms, which really wasn't the best idea. People that lived in these old homes in the 80s wanted to change the styles, but it was simply too expensive to do so, which meant that these styles lingered on for longer than they should have. Some of the sayings that were used in the 70s may seem funny now, but they were actually pretty cool back then. Remember using freaky deaky to describe something weird? Or how about telling people to stop dipping in our Kool-Aid for when someone was being nosy? Peace, love, and granola was another one, although I'm not quite sure why the granola part was added. The 70s was all about funky patterns, and it really didn't matter whether you were talking about clothing, tile, or wallpaper. Back then, there really wasn't any such thing as overkill when it came to these patterns. But today, there is. Maybe a little dash of it here and there is okay, but not all over the place. Most of the cars in the 70s got super big and long. To top that off, they really didn't have powerful engines in them in the later half of the decade, and gas mileage wasn't the best either. However, there were some small cars, and many of those were often foreign. The Ford Mustang got super big in 1973 and 1974, but by 1976 it was a whole lot tinier. A couple of the most popular small American cars were the Ford Pinto and the AMC Gremlin. Both of these cars were sort of weird shaped and not the best looking. The Pinto had its own set of problems when someone hit it in the rear and then it suddenly exploded. So for obvious reasons, these cars are certainly not something we would love to see back. 
The 1970s was full of style and it was all about getting bigger and bolder. As we look back at some of these trendy styles, we now realize that we never want some of these back. In many ways, it's hard to believe that we all went along with these trends. What are some of the things from the 70s that you never want to see come back? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.